Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Five Facts. We're here today to talk about One Hour Photo. One Hour Photo is a 2002 film starring Robin Williams and directed by Mark Romanek. And it's a major departure for Robin Williams. We'd seen him do some serious roles in like Dead Poets Society and all that. There was still a little bit of goofiness there. This time we get to see him actually be the bad guy. And it makes for a really, really interesting movie. But before we get into any sort of summaries or anything like that, let's get to the facts. Fact number one, the Edgerton Hotel is not an actual hotel, but named for an engineer who made photography equipment. The hotel where Cy confronts the adulterers in this movie is called the Edgerton Hotel, and that's actually not a real hotel. It's named after Harold Doc Edgerton, who ended up making the stroboscopic flash. Basically, he's one of the people that developed the flash as we know it today. He's also a pretty well-known photographer himself. Some of his best-known images are actually a bullet going through a playing card, a drop of milk dropped into more milk to make like a perfect milk coronet, and basically a lot of high-speed imagery that he was able to capture with his new technology. Technology. Fact number two, size fragility is probably from abuse. I know this seems obvious to a lot of people who have seen the end of the movie, but I was actually asked this by a couple of people who I'd watched it with about how someone could turn out to be so sort of twisted, but also nice at the same time and just so socially awkward and just kind of a mess like Sai is. And because they didn't pick it up, I wanted to talk a little bit more about it. Although it's never explicitly stated that Sai was abused, his reaction during the end, during the interrogation, is pretty clear that something happened to him. The way he is talking to the cop at the end about how that cop must be a good man, how he'd never take pictures of kids like this, he'd never force them to do inhuman things, and the way the tears are welling up, the way he's just just shaken from all this like that that showed to me that he had to go or that he had gone through that and basically it left him the shell of a man that he was today it's interesting because the very first few lines of the movie actually allude to like kitty porn whenever he's talking about how he has to report it how you've got like the amateur photographers doing this you've got the people doing cats then you occasionally run across that I'm kind of surprised they didn't add another hint there that that was part of uh, why he was messed up and I also wonder if that's part of the reason what for what drew him to the profession, if maybe catching some of these people in the act was part of why he fell into the whole one-hour photo thing. I don't know that for sure, but it seems like without the extra background, that would be a plausible idea for this movie. Fact number three, a lot of people question if the hotel scene even happened. One of the more interesting theories that I kept run, running across during the researching of this is that people don't trust Sai as a narrator. There are a lot of reasons for this, like the idea where he's daydreaming and he goes into the house. They walk in and they're like, oh, hey, Uncle Cy. And like he has all these kind of far-fetched fantasies. We know that he did steal the knife. We know that he went to the hotel and canceled the room service. We don't know if he actually was in there posing the couple. It was very jerky and weird the way he was having things go there. And he was supposedly taking a bunch of pictures. But... In the end, in the interrogation room, whenever they reveal these pictures, it's actually just pictures of a blank hotel room. So either he completely got rid of that roll of film, there was no film, or he imagined himself doing that, and the stalking and the taking pictures of his boss's kid and everything else was enough for them to arrest him. It's hard for me to say. I know that they were able to expose the uh, the affair through the, uh, through the pictures from Maya, so I'm not 100% certain that they would need that to be able to arrest him, but they never say what they're charging him with. They never exactly tell you what's going on, and we see a little bit more of that unreliable narrator thing at the very end of the movie where it ends on a picture with him being part of the Yorkin family. So there's a lot here that we're not quite seeing accurately. And I'm trying to figure out how much of that is Psy and how much of that is just the movie's direction. Fact number four, most of the characters are named after popular photographers. Many of the characters in this movie share names with popular photographers from around the world. Yoshi is named after Nobuyoshi Araki, a well-known Japanese photographer. Detective Vandersee, who I've described in some of these scenes as the uh, black cop in the interrogation at the end, is named after a New York photographer. Danny Lyon, Bill Owens, and many others are also alluded to in this film. Basically, if it's a place or it's a name, it ends up having something to do with, uh, with photography. And I kind of like how they layered that in without it being obnoxious. Fact number five, popcorn facts. I usually drop into these whenever there's a bunch of small facts that I like and not one giant one to dig into, so let's take a look. Robin Williams can only stay serious for so long. 
on the set of this movie, he would go back and forth between being the nebbish, kind of sad Psy and then to being himself. There were times where during the actual car chase at the end of the movie, he burst through a hotel room door completely naked just to make everyone on set laugh. Essentially, he was given full rights from the director to try and be a joker on set and to keep morale up while they were doing this movie. Another fact about Robin Williams, because he is about as hairy as Bigfoot, they actually had to shave him down. They felt like the perception of him being like that kind of uber masculine hairy guy would detract from what they were trying to do with Psy. So he had to be fully shaved for this movie. Jack Nicholson was originally offered the role of Psy for this movie. And I think that it could have been a really interesting movie, but he always strikes me as so nuts that you wouldn't have had the slow burn effect that uh, this movie had. I kind of like that it was Robin Williams because he played the like the downtrodden guy so well, and I feel like you would have just felt that anger like all the time with Jack Nicholson because that's just kind of who he is. He's got that that underlying intensity to him. And while Robin Williams is very much intense whenever you see him in everything else, I feel like this was a better casting. In one of the voiceover pieces, Cy can be heard to say, they actually believe that any idiot that attends a two-day seminar... I... They actually believe that any idiot who attends a two-day two seminar can master the beautiful prince in less than an hour. But of course, like most things, there's far more to it than meets the eye. This is a little bit funny because Robin Williams attended a two-day seminar in order to learn how to do the one-hour photo stuff so that he could look proper while he was doing this movie. I know one-hour photo isn't outright horror, but I chose it for a very specific purpose. This movie is incredibly unsettling for me in a way that a lot of horror movies actually don't, like where it feels like those movies are disconnected from reality in a way that I'm not a part of them. Whereas this movie, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something in Robin Williams' performance that just hammers away at this desperation. This idea that if a few things went wrong whenever I was a child that I might have ended up being like this guy who's dealing with all the awfulness of his past, not moving forward, static, stuck in his probably 40s with his Velcro shoes, his very mild, mild manners, and the most bland possible personality, apartment, clothing, just all of it piled up to make a sad, sad, desperate man. And I feel like this sort of desperation is being expressed in very violent ways by a lot of, uh, a lot of the current things that are happening out in the world. And it feels like some of this awfulness is just more pungent and more terrifying than some of the monsters we've been seeing lately. Because these are the types of people that can turn into a monster like somebody who would do a Vegas shooting or anything like that. Just these broken people that don't know how to really function. And I think that's why the movie unsettled me so much is just seeing how just a few things here, a few things here, a few things here. And it ends up being this life devoid of any sort of meaning and to just know that there's so many people going through this and that, like, these could be the results is just terrifying. Psy isn't a force to be reckoned with. He's not a boogeyman. He's just an intensely sad person going down the wrong path, not knowing how to correct himself, not seeking the help that he should be getting, and basically becoming a monster because his livelihood and everything else was stripped away. The last thing that gave him any sort of vestige of humanity, usefulness, competence is just ripped out of him. And so he goes off and he does terrible things. And in this case, he doesn't become a spree killer. He doesn't become a mass murderer. He just loses his way and basically assaults some people, which is horrible enough. But I feel like there is so much more that could happen that's under, like, under the surface for Psy that... Given enough time, that bitterness might have festered even more and caused this to be something absolutely atrocious. So I think that's part of the reason why this movie is so scary for me, is that it's one of the more believable potential monsters that we've seen. Even though Robin Williams in this movie isn't entirely a bad guy. He, I don't know, it's just watching a man that's already at rock bottom find a way to roll off of another cliff. And to feel his awkwardness, to feel all of this just unease while watching it, it was super effective. What did you all think of this movie? Did you think it was one of Robin Williams' best movies? Was this something where you couldn't see him actually being that person so it didn't work for you? Was there anything in particular that creeped you out? I would love to know. Hit up the comments. And also, if you enjoyed this, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash human echoes. Starting at two bucks a month, you can support this show and all the things we do here. We will see you again in two weeks with another Five Facts.